thank you for coming and uh, uh, today I'm going to tell you my story basically um, I hope uh, it won't sound like what was the term that Matthew told humble us? Bra humble bragging. Humble bragging. I hope it won't be that uh, and I hope some of the lessons will be uh, will it be valuable for you. Um, so basically, uh, the most important slide of this talk is this. Uh, Jetrock.com slash show notes have a special page dedicated for this talk. Uh, the slides are already there. The video, uh, hopefully I press the right buttons and end it recording and I will have the recording up there uh, tonight. Uh, all the links for all the stuff that I'm going to mention is already there, so you don't really need to take any pictures of the slides except of this one. Um, comments, ratings, and a small raffle for thanking you for being here and not in the other talk, obviously. Right? Um, instance profit. Um, so, uh, my name is Baruch, I'm developer, I'm, I'm chief sticker officer, as my um, card uh, clearly states. Uh, but also head of developer relations with uh, with Jeffrog. I'm at J Baruch on Twitter. Um, very entertaining guy. You should follow me right now. If you are still not convinced, uh, my Twitter handle is conveniently on every slide. So when you decide later to follow me, you still have the Twitter handle there. Uh, so before we get to the results of what we are doing for seven years in Jeffrog, uh, we need to go back in time. A very very long, a very very long time ago, and uh, my story starts back in uh, many years. But let's first um, ask when your developer relations story starts. So, who is doing developer relations for more than ten years? How about more than seven years? That would be me. How about more than five years? How about more than two years? Okay, how about less than a year? And the rest of you? Not, not, not in developer relations? Wanna be in developer relations? So your history will start soon? Okay, that's also coming. Okay, so um, what I wanna say is um, most of the people here actually joined developer relations recently and, and those are good news, you're probably in the right place because I'm, I'm try, I will try to share with you my uh, learnings over a long period of time. So that's 2005, uh, one, one of my first speaking engagements, I was very uh, formal with, with a tie and everything, and look at me now, um, also hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, oh, I know it. So I got better. This is uh, this is my boss then and my boss now. Uh, he is a CEO of Jeffrog, and he didn't change, by the way, at all. Um, 2006. Um, this is where the product that our company Jeffrog um, started with got um, actually released. What you're looking here is the uh, first issue filed against uh, our product. And it was uh, reported by one of co-founders, and the assignee was the other co-founder. It usually is. And uh, um, who, who heard about Artifactory? Anyone? Oh, we have a lot of work to do, Tanaka. No one knows what Artifactory is. OK, so Artifactory is basically a tool that helps developers to release their soft software faster. It's a part of DevOps tooling. and. Um, developers use it, right? And and when when we started this company, when we started the product, and later the founder started the company around 2009, when it was a commercial product and not only open source product, um, there was a question of how do we reach developers, right? So we spoke today about how traditional marketing doesn't really work, and developers want to hear another voice and, and when the founders started to do it they, th they thought about having this another voice. So in 2011 um, I got a call from them and by then we worked in different companies so they called me um, I don't think this Nokia phone will, it's more like 2000 but I had to have this picture because it's an iconic 
phone. Uh, anyway, they, they called me and they told me, Baruch, it's time for you to come to JFrog. And I was like, great. I was a Java developer back then. And I'm like, OK, I know that I will come and, and uh, work as a developer. And he's like, by the way, we have a new role for you. And I'm like, OK, what is it? And then my boss, he, he told me, we don't know how to call it. So we, we envision it to be um, the Secretary of State. It's like a Minister of External Affairs for our company. You will, you will go and speak with developers for us. Right? You will be the voice of JFrog. This is what they told me. And they're like, by the way, we don't know how to call it. So Google up a name so we can put it in, our, in, the, in the contract. And I Googled it. And I'm like, oh, I know how to call it. It's called Evangelist. And my boss, he said, no, that's a religious term. I don't want that. And then I Googled again. And then I came, I saw this developer advocate. And he's like, OK, you want to be a lawyer? Be a lawyer. I'll call you developer advocate. That's fine. So this is how, this is how it all gets started. And we had no idea what we were doing right? back then. I, I didn't know how to do it right. And, and, and what to say and what not to say. So this is QCon London 2012. That was like three months after I joined. Um, I delivered my first presentation about, uh, about Artifactory. And it was horrible. It was like product pitch in the face, like you know, product features in my talk. That was like a demo, which was all about our product. This conference never invited me again, because this is not what you do. But that was, we didn't know anything. What we did was evangelism. We didn't use this name, but that's exactly what we knew by then. And we thought that we are going to help the developers by telling them how to do their job. And here is our product, by the way. We will tell you what to do. And because we thought that our product is so good that everybody will want it. And we truly believed in it. So what we thought is that if we speak with a lot of people and tell them how great our product is, they will go and buy our product. So our, our goals were all about speaking with more people, doing like lead conversions, like pure marketing. We will go to as many possible conferences. We will uh, then uh, make sure that we have the most people in the room. And we will have huge amount of Twitter followers. And we will blog and, and, and bring traffic to our blog. And the idea behind that was that we will tell as many people as possible how awesome we are. And they are going to try our product out. And they are going to buy. That was our thinking uh, back in 2012. And I think from my conversations, there is, this is the thinking of a lot of people that start with developer relations. They think that it's a marketing in disguise. And if we will just call it with some name that doesn't have marketing in the title, and we will pretend that it's not about marketing but about the product, this is the problem. This is where we started, and with the years we learned that this is not to not a good way to go about it. Um, it was also a question of okay, where do we put developer relations? So obviously in the beginning we we were like six people, so um, we reported to um, I reported to CEO and then to CTO uh, and and then the VP of marketing. It was all very very marketing activity. And then after a couple of years of doing that and having mixed results and having mixed uh, reactions and you know suddenly conferences don't want you to speak at the conferences anymore because you are too marketing and suddenly you know people don't want to follow you on Twitter because you are all about product pitch the realization that we are doing something wrong came 
So, when people like, well, we, we are not sure we want to talk to you, and we didn't have any strategy of how to engage with people. Um, I think the most important turning point for me was uh, DevRelCon 2016 in, uh, in London. Um, I, Matthew invited me to give a talk there, well, I actually forced myself on Matthew to give a talk there about developer relations strategy. And the thing about it that by then I didn't have any strategy. You saw what I did. I, I went to conferences and spoke about JetRog and our products. But here, when preparing to this talk, I actually started to learn more and think about strategy and think about DevRel as something bigger than evangelism. And I went then and I'm like, well, I think I know everything. People know that everything, but I actually don't know anything. And I started to learn. And I started to read about the history and about different companies and about how they do it. And I started to interview tons of people. And, and, and I started to realize that what we used to do in 2012 is not the right thing to do. Now, the good news today is that you don't really need to do this research by yourself. Because uh, Marie Fengel did all the research for you and put everything in the one most important book for developer relations. If you want to learn everything you need to do about developer relations, you just buy Marie's book, it's all there. All this on the show notes page, you have, um, you have the URL of where to buy. It. So, no worries about that. And this is where the 2006 uh, talk and then, and then the book and, and everything that happened lead to this change from what we started to what, to, to what we are doing now. And today, instead of evangelizing and pitching our product, what we are trying to do is helping developers being more productive by listening to their problems and working together to solve those problems, sometimes and preferably with tools that JFrog do, but sometimes not. Sometimes I honestly say to people, you know what? You don't need our tool. You don't need it yet. You need an alternative. Come back when you will have a certain problem that our tool can do, but for now, do something else. And this integrity, this being honest, is the most important thing, and that's the, the true difference between evangelism and developer advocacy and putting developer in the front. And listening to the developers is something that makes all the difference. Because if you only preach, if you only do a product pitch, if you only talk about yourself, your product, your company, and you only talk about that, you, never, you will never know when your product is right for the problem and when it's not because you don't know what the problem is. You put the problem in the developer's mouth, but they actually don't have it. And it creates antagonism. People start hating you for that. You're telling them that they have the, this problem, but they have another problem. And you never asked. So you don't know what is the right solution. Instead, when you listen, developers feel they are being hurt. And this is very important because people love to tell about their problems. And if you listen, that's good. Now, it's also justified for the business. Because when you listen, you have a good feedback that you can bring back to your product team. And if you remember Matthew talk, he spoke about how important it is to show a value of developer relations team to the company, this is a very, very simple way to show value. You bring valuable feedback to your product team, and product team thanks you, and this is how developer relations is valuable for the company. So this is also very good, right? And also, the image of the company changes. Now, instead of 
Well, they just preach their product. They just do marketing. Your company now perceived as responsive, right? We gave them that feedback and now they implemented this feature. How cool this company is. This is a very, very good thing. Uh, what happened? I have the same slide twice. Sorry. Okay. And the only thing measurement changed as well, because now we don't care about just how many people sat in the room when I was talking about my product. Now we want to measure engagement. We want to measure conversation. We want to manage measure feedback. So actually, instead, how many people saw my content, I only care about how many people care about my content. Right? What engagement my content create? How many shared my message? Not how many heard my message. How many influencers I influenced? How many people actually will pass this forward as you heard about the talk of the ambassadors, etc. Right? Right? And, and instead of just being, okay, we want to preach, we want to be perceived as leaders, right? And Jeffrey leads by helping developers in innovative ways. It's not that we just have a product and you use it. Instead, we want to add more value. Help us do even more by talking with us, right? Give us your feedback, not just because we want to sell you product to, to a response, but because we will get better when you when it is a conversation. And also, check us out. And check if that makes sense for your product. So instead of saying, well, you know what, I know better what problem you have, and my tool is the solution to your problem, instead, I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about trends in the market. I'm talking about the future. I'm talking about the principles behind what we do. And if it makes sense for you, you will buy a product. If not, that's okay as well. It's a huge difference. It's like a completely different goals and completely different strategy. Right? And one of the examples of this switch is the Liquid Software book. Now that's a book that we wrote, co-founders of Jeff Rock, Fred Simon, Joel Landman, and myself, about the future of software updates. How many times you think our company is mentioned in this book? Zero. How many times our products are mentioned in this book? Zero. This is not a marketing book. This is a developer relations book. We want some concepts to, you know, to announce some concepts. And if that's your reality, if you agree with what's written there, your next step will be, okay, now we want to see which tools those authors are behind and if those tools make sense to us. Right? So that, that's an example of the biggest switch. Compare this with what I showed you in 2012, a product pitch. It's all about Jeff Robert de Factory, Jeff Robert de Factory. Right? That's a, that's a 100, 100, 180 degrees uh, shift in, in, in what we are doing. And, and once we stopped doing marketing, suddenly we are more valuable for our entire organization. Now, not only we don't have to report to marketing, we actually can serve much more. So obviously we still eventually bring people to buy our products, right? And if I learned today, this conference is not a very good example because you, uh, most of you are not developers, but if I go to a conference and I talk about liquid software and then someone comes to, comes to me and say, you know what, I want to see a demo of your product, this is a lead that I still contribute to marketing. In the end of the day, marketing benefits from my activities. 
but also product. Remember we spoke about how I collect feedback and product benefits. Also R&D, because when I speak about innovative solutions that we do in JFrog, from technical perspective, I'm the voice of our R&D, and they are obviously help, uh, thankful that I, that I voice, that I can help them to promote their things. Sometimes sales. Sometimes I meet people that actually need help with buying. And if I bring this lead hotly to sales, they're like, yeah, DevRel is the best thing for us, right? Support, when we, sp when we help people in our networking, our support will have less load, so that's good for them as well. And HR, hiring, right? Someone re reads our book about liquid software, and they're like, wow, this is so cool. I want to work for this company. And then they have an interview, and people ask, how do you have it about JFrog? And they're like, yeah, I heard, um, I actually uh, uh, wrote, I, I read this book, or I heard Barrow speaking in the conference, right? So this networking now is much smarter. We have an influencer's program instead of just running around and, you know, preaching. It's mutually beneficial and it's collaboration and friendship of equals instead of me being on stage and you being down there and I just preach from my, uh, from my head. That's not what we do anymore, right? And I mentioned how HR benefits. Let's make our HR happy. We're looking for a developer advocate uh, in Tokyo, and uh, come work with me. Tanaka is here uh, to um, speak with you about the details. Twitter ads and Q&A. Um, show notes, don't forget, you go there for slides, videos, and everything else. I mentioned Barrow on Twitter. This is DevRelCon, and thank you very much.